Hello friends, this is Supriya. Welcome back to my channel Biology Reader. Today in this video, we will study the operon concept through a classic model of Lac operon in E. coli. So friends, let's get started. Friends, first we will discuss what is operon. If we define it in simple words, operon is basically a gene regulatory system found commonly in prokaryotes like bacteria and archaea. Operon is generally a small segment of DNA that comprises cluster of genes including closely related structural genes and regulatory DNA sequences in promoter and operator sites as you can see in this diagram. All the genes in the operon system work together under the control of regulatory genes and the cell decides when to switch on or switch off the operon system depending upon its requirements. For example, E. coli cell uses lac operon system when it needs to metabolize lactose only in the absence of glucose. Another example is E. coli cell uses tryptophan operon to synthesize tryptophan amino acid when there is low concentration outside the cell. Friends, there must be some questions in your mind. So let us discuss some of the common questions related to the operon concept. First question is who introduced the concept of operon? So the answer is here. Jacob and Monod proposed the first operon model for the regulation of gene action in E. coli in the early 1960s. They were also awarded Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine in 1965 for their contributions. Then the next question is which organisms have the operon system? The answer is that the operon system is common in prokaryotic organisms mainly bacteria and some archaea. But certain species of nematodes and fruit flies also have an operon system. After that the question is what are the components of an operon system? The answer is that the combination of closely related structural genes or the coding DNA sequences plus the regulatory DNA sequences in the promoter and operator regions form the operon system. The last question is how do operons regulate gene expression? So friends the answer to this question is very simple. Each operon has regulatory DNA sequences that functions as binding sites for the regulatory protein and this binding either promotes or inhibits transcription. Now we will discuss the working of operon. Operon is a functional unit of DNA regulating gene expression and synthesis of polypeptides. In the operon system regulatory genes synthesize regulatory or repressor proteins that bind to the operator site by either promoting or inhibiting transcription. Then the RNA polymerase is an enzyme that binds to the promoter region. If the operator site is free from the repressor protein then the RNA polymerase will move further and copies the information carried by the structural genes to transcribe mRNA. At last the ribosomes translate the mRNA into multiple proteins. Now let us take a quick overview on the meaning of lacoperon. In the term lacoperon, lac stands for lactose which is a disaccharide sugar naturally found in milk and it is composed of glucose and galactose subunits. Then operon is the cluster of genes in the DNA segment which regulate or control the metabolism of lactose. E. coli uses the lac operon system for the transport and metabolism of lactose. The lac operon contains genes that can break down lactose into simpler units like glucose and galactose that the cells can utilize easily. It is also important to know that the lac operon is expressed only when lactose is present and glucose is absent. Now we will discuss the components of the lac operon. This is the lac operon segment in which lac I is the regulatory gene. Lac P and lac O contain regulatory DNA sequences. Then lac Z, Y and A are the structural genes that contains coding DNA sequences. Lac I is the regulatory gene that controls the functioning of the promoter and operator region. Lac I gene produces regulatory or repressor proteins that can bind to the operator site in the absence of inducer or lactose. Then lac P is the promoter site that is present in between the regulator gene and the operator site and it contains regulatory DNA sequences to which the RNA polymerase binds or promotes transcription. Then lac O is the operator site present between the promoter sequences and structural genes. It also contains regulatory DNA sequences to which the lac I repressor protein or regulatory protein can bind by either promoting or inhibiting the transcription process. Then lac Z, Y and A are the structural genes of the lac operon. Lac Z gene encodes an enzyme beta galactosidase that hydrolyzes or breaks down a disaccharide lactose into simpler glucose and galactose subunits. Lac Y gene encodes an enzyme lactose permease that is found in the cell membrane of an E. coli cell. Its main function is to transport lactose into the bacterial cytoplasm. Then lac A gene encodes for an enzyme thiogalactoside transacetylase that controls the activity of an enzyme beta galactosidase 
by transferring acetyl group from coenzyme A to the hydroxyl group of galactosides. However, its function in the lycoperon system is still unknown. Now we will study the lycoperon model in the presence of lactose as an inducer. So this is the DNA segment containing genes for the metabolism of lactose. Here the lacai gene produces repressor mRNA which on translation produces lacai repressor protein. In the presence of inducer, the repressor proteins becomes inactive because an inducer blocks the binding site of the repressor protein to the operator region. So in this case, the repressor protein cannot bind to the operator region and the RNA polymerase attached to the promoter sequences will move further by transcribing the structural genes into the polycystronic mRNA. A polycystronic mRNA is a single mRNA that can encode multiple proteins. Later, the ribosomes translate the polycystronic mRNA into proteins or enzymes that are required for the metabolism of lactose. Now let us discuss the lycoperon model in the absence of inducer or lactose. Again, the lacai gene will produce lacai repressor protein. When there is no lactose in the surrounding, the repressor protein becomes active and it binds to the operator region by blocking the further movement of RNA polymerase. As a result, there will be no transcription and translation. Therefore, an E. coli cell uses the lacoperon system when it has lactose only in the surrounding. But if there is enough glucose in the surrounding, then a cell will not utilize lactose or the cell will not waste its energy for the metabolism of lactose. So friends, this is all for today. To know this topic more in detail, you can visit our official website that is biologyreader.com. Link is provided in the description box. So if you find this lesson useful, do like, comment, share and subscribe my channel. And don't forget to press the bell icon for more videos.